because we're talking a long time ago now. Yeah. When I I went to graduate school in 1961, computers were pretty young then. They were vacuum tubes and <laughs> with, with thousands of, of things. I um, but I, I was somewhat interested and. Uh, and my advisor, who was a logician, Hal Wong, uh, also had an interest in, in, in computers. And uh, so he, he worked for IBM for a while. Anyway, I was, I was someone that, so that influenced me. And I, I thought, oh, there's really interesting. Things were, and there are interesting questions to go on. Uh, in, in the theory of, of complexity theory. Um, now my, my own interest is, is more in, um, in trying to, in, in, we have a whole range of difficulties of complexity classes. I mean, we, we might start, for example, well, polynomial time was uh, at, is supposed to mean feasible, roughly. You can do it in a reasonable amount of time. But we have uh, smaller classes, much smaller classes, um, where we're looking at the amount of um, uh, memory needed in order to compute. And, and the, the small class there is logarithmic space, where the, um, the number of memory bits is only the logarithm or a multiple of the logarithm of, of the size of the input. And uh, so we call that log space. We use space is, is, is the complexity class. So anyway, I'm just trying to say a log space is a supposedly a small part of polynomial time. And uh, so, but we complexity theorists are very bad at separating complexity classes. It's not just um, separating P and NP, but log space is presumably a proper a very small subset of polynomial time. Everything in log space can be done in polynomial time, and uh, we can't prove they're different. But it's much worse than that. We can't separate log space from NP. We certainly need some new ideas, that's for sure. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what you, about approaches, I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, with approaches to think hard about the problem. <laughs> so is the barrier that you hit when you're trying to prove that log space is, is not. smaller, is it similar to the barriers <coughs> being hit when people try to prove P is definitely smaller than NP? Is, are they, or are they totally different problems? Well, they're related, um, but but the sad the sad story is we just don't know how to proceed to do it. I mean, a lot, obviously, a huge amount of effort has has been been put in it. I've I've been thinking particularly a lot about logs, trying to separate log space and polynomial time, um, because we we have you know simple examples of problems that are in polynomial space. Um, and just no way can we think of doing them with a tiny bit of luck. They really need a lot of space to solve. And, but it just seems to be very, very difficult to, to prove it. Yeah, what's NP hard, of course, is finding the exact um, the the exact best order of reaching all the cities. Um, the, that's very hard, but you can approximate their algorithms to approximate um, the the best route. So, for class, for practical purposes, 
Yeah, I say you can argue, yeah. well, why do we have to have the exact? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. There, there are certainly questions you can approach. I mean, I mean, even if you're in cryptography and you want to show you can't break the RSA encryption scheme, um, it doesn't help if you can approximate something. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, there are reasons to uh, show problems that are impossible. Factoring, for example. Well, quantum computing, in principle, seems to be very powerful. I mean, for example, quantum computers, in principle, can factor large numbers into their prime factorizations. And uh, so, of course, of course, that's important. Um, my understanding, though, in practice, quantum computers are, um, are well behind what they're supposed to be able to do. I mean, actually making them... <laughs> Uh, work seems to be a, a huge problem. You probably know, know more about that than me, but uh, they're able to solve problems that are in NP that we don't know how to solve in polynomial time. And the factoring problem is the, is the best example. When you have a product of 2,000-digit prime numbers, um, it's easy to multiply them, but if you're given the product, finding the prime factors is... Um, in practice, um, we don't know how to do it. I mean, the RSA encryption scheme is, may, depends on that assumption. Yes. Um, but in principle, quantum computers are supposed to be able to do that. And my understanding, though, is in practice, they can't yet. <laughs> My uh, advisor is a graduate student, Hao Wang at Harvard, um, was uh, a, interested in, in logic and um, recursion theory. And what led me to this idea was exactly the computable func theory of computable functions, which, which had the and, re well, so-called recursively enumerable sets. And uh, so the same phenomenon was there. You, you had recursively enumerable complete sets, and they were equ all equivalent to the hardest recursively enumerable sets. <coughs> and, of course, the difference was the... the these sets were not decidable. There was no algorithm that could... Um, solve them at all. So, but that was the analogy. It's different, of course, in our, uh, <coughs> NP complete sets. They were computable, uh, but not feasibly computable. It took exponentially amount. Presumably, guess it takes exponential amount of time to solve the, the problems. Um, but the analogy is there, and that's that's where I got the idea. Yeah, it's hard to know. No, I mean that's not my field. AI. I have lots of colleagues are are, are thinking about that, but um, the uh, I, I guess the worry is that uh, they can, the the AI robots can start uh, competing with us in more and more areas, and uh, so what are we to do then? I, mean, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I mean, do you, whether you have a gut sense of, you know, in your lifetime, will... How much will I be replaced? Yeah, will, yeah, will <laughs> you know, and there's different problems, you know, self-driving cars, uh, say a chat bot that could pass the Turing test, like, do you expect, uh, I mean, obviously, none of us can know this with certainty, but I'm just curious from where you sit. I assume, I mean, the... the Self-driving cars seem to be uh, developing pretty pretty fast. So, and there seems to be some sense that they are going to exist, and that yeah. that will have um, the sort of replace drivers, and they're they're going ultimately going to be safe. So, I guess that's one of the relatively easy problems. So, but. Uh, 
replacing um, mathematical thinking. I, I, other thinking is, is a different question. Um, that, that's, that's much harder to say. I don't know how far... I mean, ultimately, I suppose, there's no reason to think um, machines can't do what people can do. I mean, there's no barrier there that, that I can think of. It's just a question of time. Uh, <laughs> I think I think the, our brains are computers, and and they're they're because there's billions of of neurons, and they're extremely complicated computers, and uh, that's uh, that's what's going on. That's why. Uh, ultimately, uh, I, I assume that uh, we can build computers that, that can do what we do. Uh, I don't see any barrier there. I know there, there exists scientists who think there's a barrier, but um, I can't see it. And uh, that's the way it is. What to do about it is a different question. <laughs> what is our role? What is the role of humans is a different question. Uh, um, well, right now, of course, our minds seem to be much more sophisticated than robots and AI. Uh, but that, that this is just the beginning of, of what, what's going to happen. As I, as, I, as I mentioned, everyone knows, we have extremely complex, sophisticated brains. And uh, um, so... And even... I mean, that brings up an interesting point. Um, even... Even insects can do amazing things. I mean, uh, look at the monarch butterflies that manage to find their way from Toronto to uh, Texas or Mexico and all know where to go. I, mean, I can't imagine at this point we could build machines that are as small as butterflies and do anything like that. So in a sense, I mean, they're... There's a long way to go, um, and of course, the butterflies uh, have very relatively small brains too. So, also, I watch the squirrels in our backyard and um, mm -hmm. climbing the trees and jumping here and there and there. That's that's not thinking. That's motor control. They have huge motor control. They keep their balance and they estimate where to go and this and that. And we can't do that. <laughs> I guess there's a long way to go. I just don't see ultimately why it can't be done.